Today I'm going to be talking about how to choose return sides. So obviously before the match with your partner, you can talk with them and decide I'm going to play deuce, you're going to play add or vice versa. And I did a podcast on this several months ago and we posted it on Instagram and a lot of the comments uh, really failed to understand what I was trying to articulate in the podcast. So I wanted to shoot this video and go a little bit more in depth to help people understand why some of these myths are not uh, necessarily things that you should follow. So when we're talking about choosing return sides, again, we obviously have two choices, deuce or add, but this is a very, very complex problem to uh, use just a blanket statement, like the stronger players should play in the ad court and just follow it every time. Uh, doubles just isn't that simple, and that's what makes it so fun. Um, there's so many different scenarios where this is just simply not true, and I'm going to go through uh, some examples here with you in a second. Um, but first, I want to talk through uh, each of these situations and kind of respond to a few of the comments from that Instagram post, which I'll link to below. So the stronger player should play in the ad court is something uh, that's what the post was about, and the reason that I explain why this is not true is because the deuce court player gets more total points. So on any given game, if you're playing with add, uh, if it ends up going to deuce, both players are going to get the same amount of returns. If the game is 40-30 or 30-40, both players are going to get the same amount of returns. If it's 40-love or love-40, both players are going to get the same amount of returns because it ends in the ad court no matter what. But on 15-40 and 40-15 games, which aren't the majority of games, but they do happen uh, in a typical two out of three set match, the deuce court player is going to get three returns and the ad court player is only going to get two. So for that reason, uh, you might consider playing your stronger player in the deuce court because when you're down 1540, if your odds of winning that point are better, then maybe you can get back into a deuce game. And you want your better player taking more cuts of the ball. One of the best tactics you can use with a weaker partner is find ways to force the opponent to hit to you. And playing in the deuce court is one of those ways you can do that. Now, of course, this isn't the only thing you should consider. Um, a lot of the comments on the Instagram post were about the stronger player has to finish the game, the stronger player has to win the game points. And I would believe that if you think the stronger player uh, has a higher likelihood of winning that point than they would on any other given point. So in reality, a game point is no different than a love all point. It's still played the same way, it's played with the exact same rules, and it's worth a game instead of just a point but your odds of winning it don't change from love love to uh, up 30 40 on a break point so if you have a weaker partner and they feel a lot of pressure on game points for some reason uh, then maybe you don't want them playing the ad court to take all those game points that's a decent argument uh, i will say kind of counter to that there's a blog post by jeff sackman who has studied this uh, at the pro level and what he found was pressure actually affects everyone the same. So let's say the stronger player has a 60% chance of winning all of their return points. The weaker player has a 40% chance of winning all their return points. That doesn't actually change for the pressure points. So um, if you're able to have the stronger player in the deuce court, you're more likely to get looks at 30-40 where you're up break point Whereas if the weaker players in the deuce court, you're more than likely going to be down 40-30 trying to stay in the game. And the odds of them winning the point don't go down just because they're the weaker player. They're still going to win about 40% of those break points, just like they'll win about 40% of the love 15 or 15 love points. So the idea that the stronger player is uh, significantly more likely to win a break point than they are a a normal point that's not a break point or a low pressure point, uh, I feel like the evidence shows that, that that's simply not true. Um, so the stronger player in the ad court 
you know, it can work sometimes, but again, I, I think a lot of those arguments um, don't really have a lot of uh, substance behind them and don't have um, a lot of research or, or facts behind them. So I'm going to go through the uh, a few other things to consider. So obviously, you want to consider your forehand and backhand return. So if I love my forehand return cross court, I probably want to play in the deuce court. If I love my backhand return cross court, you might want to play in the ad court. Uh, this is going to depend on your skill level as well. If you're at a lower level, they probably can't hit this T-serve with a lot of consistency. At a higher level, they might be able to. Uh, net or baseline matters a lot. So I'll go through an example here in a second, but think about regardless of the serve and return, what is you and your partner's best kind of winning position on the court? So for me, a lot of times it's at the net in the ad court with my partner rallying from the deuce court. So in that scenario, I might want to uh, return from the ad court so that maybe we play two back on my return and I can return in volley. Or uh, when my partner's returning, obviously I'm at the net and we're already in our ideal position. But if you're better with uh, one player at net in the deuce court with the other person rallying from the ad court, uh, and even if this is the weaker player, if they're better rallying from the ad court with you at the net in the deuce court, maybe you're a lefty, you might want to stay here uh, and return from the deuce court. So that's something else you really want to consider. Are you better at the net or at the baseline? Uh, and what about your partner? And how does that work uh, together to help you win as a team? And then you also want to consider if there's a lefty on the court. I briefly mentioned that. I've talked about this a lot in other videos and other podcasts. Um, on how to play with a lefty, how to win with a lefty. Uh, I've got content on how to beat a lefty as well. Typically, you're going to play with four hands in the middle, uh, but if the lefty, for some reason, uh, really prefers returning from the ad side and you really prefer returning from the do side, you want to prioritize returns first. I talked about that uh, with Phil Farmer on that podcast episode. He's the coach of uh, the number one doubles player in the world, Austin Krychek, and used to work with the Bryan brothers. Um, so the lefty uh, does change things, but if you're comfortable returning on either side, generally four hands in the middle is best because you want to have your strength in the middle and control the center of the court. So a couple of examples here uh, from the last couple of years where I've had issues re uh, choosing return sides or um, put the stronger player in the deuce court, for example. So Recently, I was with my team at 9-0 Mixed Sectionals, and one of our combos was a 4-5 lady, a 4-5 guy, and the guy had a really strong backhand, and the girl preferred her forehand. So the guy overall is, is probably a little bit stronger player, uh, but he really has a much better backhand than forehand. And when they were warming up, I was talking to them and I said, you might consider playing with the guy, even though he's the stronger player in the deuce court so that y'all can have your strengths in the middle. Now he does typically return from the ad court because he loves to hit his backhand cross court and then return in volley. Um, and that's what they ended up doing in the first set. So the guy played in the ad court, the girl played in the deuce court, they lost the first set. So then they switched and moved their strengths to the middle and they turned the match around and won the, the, the second set and forced a 10-point tiebreaker. And I talked to them after the match, and they said that that worked a lot better for them. So this is a scenario where the deuce court player is always going to get more returns, and we put the stronger player in the deuce court so that we could have their strengths in the middle. And it clearly worked out better. Uh, they lost the first set doing the opposite. They won the second set um, going with the stronger player in the deuce court. Uh, another match, um, a 4-0, 4-5 combo. So this is from three or four years ago when I was a 4-5 player. Uh, I played with uh, a player who liked to rally from the baseline, and he really liked to hit inside-out uh, forehands. So he preferred to rally from the ad court. And typically, I do return from the ad court because I like my backhand return cross court, and I also like to hit inside-out uh, backhands but he was just not a very strong net player. And that's one of my strengths. So we determined that we're probably going to be best with me at net in the deuce court and him rallying from the ad court. And he was pretty quick, so he can cover the lob and he can hold his own against a four or five player, especially with me 
being active at the net and putting a lot of pressure on the opponent. So that was another scenario where we determined it's best to have the weaker player in the ad court. Uh, and it worked out for us. We won that match in straight sets. Um, I was able to hit uh, mostly forehand returns cross court, which is another strength for me. Um, and then avoid too many backhand errors uh, inside out, which is um, a little bit awkward, but uh, I was able to make that work. Uh, last one is a 4-5-5-0 combo. So this is for a ladies match. Uh, in this scenario, the stronger player, the 5-0, is a lefty. And she likes to rally from the deuce court. She likes to hit backhands uh, from over here and just rip backhands cross court. Uh, she'll take a few down the line and really dictate uh, off the ground. And this 4-5 player was a strong net player. So in this case, they decided that this is their best scenario with her, uh, the stronger player, again, rallying from the deuce court with the weaker player at net in the ad court. So in this scenario, the stronger player obviously returning from the deuce court. Uh, they won um, the two matches that they did play, one of them in a third set, another one in, in straights. And uh, this player was able to help out uh, from the net because the stronger player back here is really hitting with good depth, working the ball around and setting up the weaker player at the net where they're more comfortable. Now, if they did the opposite, if they moved the stronger player over here, the weaker player would have to rally from the deuce court the stronger where they're less comfortable and the stronger player is more comfortable from the baseline and they'd have to be at the net. When they did this scenario, the stronger player prefers her backhand, and remember, she's a lefty. So she's going to have to be hitting runaround backhands cross court, which is not nearly as comfortable for her, or hit forehands cross court, which is also not a strength. And then this right-handed player, all of a sudden, we're moving their backhand volley to the middle. Uh, so there's a lot of negatives to choosing the stronger player in the ad court uh, in that particular scenario. So I'm not saying the stronger players should always play in the deuce court. Uh, I'm not saying they should always play in the ad court. I'm saying it's much more complicated than that. Um, it's true that the deuce court returner is typically, uh, in almost any match, going to get more return opportunities. That's just one small thing to consider. Uh, you also want to consider all of these other factors I've talked about here today. today. So uh, if you have any questions, any comments, if you still disagree with me, that's okay. I love the the disagreement and the dialogue, um, leave the comments below. And if you like this video and found it helpful, uh, like it below as well. And I will talk to you in the next one. If you want to become a smarter doubles player and start winning more matches, then join the Tennis Tribe Doubles Strategy Newsletter. Every single Thursday, I'll send you a new doubles tip or tactic that you can use in your very next match. And when you join, you're going to get a free guide on how to play with more confidence and start dominating at the net in doubles. My name's Will. I'm the founder of the Tennis Tribe. And over the last five years, I've worked with players at every level of the game, from USTA 3-0 players all the way to Division I college programs, as well as some of the top 10 doubles players in the world. And on Thursdays, with this strategy newsletter, I share that knowledge and advice that I've gained over the years with you. So to sign up, you can go to thetennistribe.com. And again, you'll get that free net play guide when you join.